A bunch of y'all sent me this video on how leak code is the worst thing to happen to software engineering, and you know I have some opinions on this, so let's give it a watch. This is from Coding with D, by the way, so make sure to give her a subscribe as well. There are so many YouTube videos about how to learn leak code, how to get good at leak code, leak code solutions, but how come there aren't any videos about how absolutely leak code is? Side note. I'm guilty of this myself. I have made a few videos on this. And by the way, if your leak code looks like this, where you have 1,111 problems solved, you are absolutely studying for coding interviews in the wrong way. Unless you just enjoy doing it or something like that, this is not an efficient way to study for coding interviews. Not if you do like lead code, this video is probably not for you. However, <laughs> if you have been spending hours grinding lead code and you are sick of it, well, grab a chair because this video is going to be one big fat Rant. Also, by the way, D, if you're watching this, I love the editing style on this. Great job. On how much lead code sucks. <laughs> if you don't know what lead code is, congratulations. You have lived a good life. I sound so bitter. I should maybe edit that out. <laughs> lead code is a site that posts thousands of small coding problems at different levels of difficulties. And all it does is that it asks you to solve them. It also does have various tests it does on your solution in order for you to actually pass the question. Now, most people who are practicing lead code aren't practicing lead code to get better at software engineering or coding. They are practicing lead code to get a job, a job specifically at FANG. And now- So I don't know about these specific parts. So I would agree that most people using lead code and other tools like it aren't using them to just get better at coding. I think some people might be, although I don't think that's a very efficient way to do that. But it is something you need to do to get most software engineering jobs, or at least something that's very beneficial to getting most software engineering jobs. Because while it might have started at FANG, most startups and other tech companies, at least in sort of Silicon Valley and that type of tech company, are using these data structures and algorithms coding interviews. And tools like Leak Code and Algo Expert are good ways to actually prepare for those interviews if you use them correctly, which I think is a big if, and a lot of people aren't actually doing that. Now there is this culture of grinding lead code day and night solving hundreds of problems just so that you can get employed at FANG or a big tech company. And it really is a culture. There are videos of people solving 500 lead code problems and giving strategies. This guy solved 1,500 problems. This person spent three months on lead code. Now people are spending a lot of time learning lead code because while well, companies want lead code, in their software engineering interviews. But does lead code even make you a good software engineer? No. And we'll prep. Well, I would agree with that, that lead code does not make you a good software engineer, but that's also not the point. The point is that companies are doing these data structures and algorithms interviews, and as such, tools began to exist for people to study for these interviews. And I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing that these help you get good at this particular skill rather than becoming a better software engineer in general. That said, even if it's not the primary goal, I do also think that you can become a better software engineer through Leak Code and through Algo Expert and all of these different tools if, again, you are actually using them correctly. So if you're doing 1,500 questions, at some point, just diminishing returns, you're not actually getting better, you're just memorizing more and more solutions. But if you're using them in a way to actually get better at problem solving, to test your ability to solve these problems actually from your brain and not through memorization, and if you also use them in a way to test your communication skills and your ability to articulate solutions, those are things that are actually very important on the job and things you can get better at through these tools like Leak Code and Algo Expert, again, if you're using them in this way. If you're just trying to get as many problems solved as possible, I totally agree. You're probably not getting much better at programming or at software engineering, at least not beyond like the very bare minimum point. Does a lead code like that actually make your interview well? No, here's why. Here are some lead code problems. And as you can see, it does rely heavily on algorithmic and data structure problems. What is happening is that coders will practice these problems and similar problems over and over again until they have it memorized. And that is how they will prep for an interview. And what happens in a lead code interview? Well, the coder gets a problem from an interviewer, such as given a collection of words, return the most frequently occurring word. And usually the coder who has probably done this problem or a similar problem will just start coding immediately because they know exactly what to do. 
Yeah, if you are doing this in an interview, you are interviewing incorrectly and you are probably failing your coding interviews, even if you are getting the questions correct. Oftentimes hear people say things like, I know I got the question correct and I still didn't get the job. And oftentimes the reason for that is that you don't understand what the criteria for these interviews actually are. And you can actually look it up. A lot of the criteria from big companies have become essentially public information. And it's not about getting the questions perfectly correct. Sometimes that is like one of four criteria points, but the other criteria points are about your problem solving abilities. So how you sort of go about the problem, how you look at different possible solutions, how you ask clarifying questions, and then how you communicate the solution that you want to take and why you want to go down that path. These are all things that are very important and that you won't be doing well in if all you're doing is just regurgitating information that you memorized from leak code. So they will probably jump straight into the coding, I'll put the answer and then explain the steps. This does not happen in real life. I mean, I do wish I could know an answer immediately after looking at a problem, but most of the time that doesn't happen. If I am a software engineer at work and I come across a problem, I don't immediately jump straight into it and start coding. I usually spend a few minutes figuring out some questions or even some edge cases. So if my question is, Given a collection of word, return the most frequently used word. I would ask questions like, how will my input to be given? Will it be a list? Will it be a file? What should I return if there were multiple words of the same frequency? What should I return if the collection is empty? And that is a common process that you would do as a software engineer. And you should do the exact same thing in your coding interviews. Fortunately, that process of asking questions and thinking through your solution briefly before you just jump to the coding, that process is falling away with the lead code interviews. Now, this is probably the coder's fault or the person getting interviewed, but I do also think it is the current lead code culture where you just need to code as fast as you can to get the solution. And so I would agree with that, that it's something that's coming from this leak code culture, but I do think it's a culture created by the community. I don't think companies are pushing for this. What companies want is a good way to actually tell if somebody is a good software engineer. They want ways to actually evaluate your problem solving skills and all of these different things that we talk about. And they created these algorithm style coding interviews as the solution to that. And people are trying to game the system too much. And because of that, we get these people who are just regurgitating information and this culture of memorize, memorize, memorize. But that's not actually how you get the job. Most people I've talked to who work at big tech did do some leak code or algo expert or whatever, but they didn't do 500 questions. They maybe did 30 or 50 or at most like 100 or 200 but even that to me is somebody who's probably done too many questions. Although in some ways I do think the companies can still be held at fault for this culture because they haven't really done a whole lot to prevent it. In fact, I've had like recruiters actually tell me, hey, these are some good leak code questions to practice before the interview. And I don't think that's good. I think a much better thing to tell me would be, here's the criteria that you were being evaluated on. And then I would go and I would practice things like articulating my thought process rather than practicing things like memorizing more and more solutions. Look, practicing lead code is fine. It's great. But the issue is, I think when you practice solving so many similar problems, your brain almost loses that ability to actually think through what the solution can be, ask clarifying questions, etc. It wants to just jump to the solution that you know and practiced, which... Yeah. Absolutely agree. If you get to the point where you find yourself almost freezing up because you see a question you've never seen before, you're probably doing too many questions. For an interview isn't the best answer. This person posted on Reddit, and I'm going to have to censor myself here, but this is what they said. Lead code. Anyone who asks lead code questions that 99% of people can't solve in 30 minutes unless they've done the problem before the people who've gamed the interview system by grinding hundreds of hours of lead code. The people who've let this vicious cycle continue and spiral out of control because they're too brain dead to ask relevant interview questions for the specific role. Yeah, so because they're back too to this. So I would sort of agree with parts of this, but parts of this I don't necessarily agree with. So for one, if you are asking questions that absolutely cannot be solved by somebody who's never done the question before in a 30 or 45 minute interview or whatever it is, that's probably not good. You probably shouldn't be asking that. Although I do think there is sort of a case for it in that if you can recognize yourself, this is not a fully solvable question, and then you can give it to the interviewee and say, hey, this question is very difficult. 
and I don't expect you to solve it. I just want to see how you try to work through it. I actually think that can create a very good interview. But if you're just trying to expect them to regurgitate out some solution because the only way to actually do it is to have it memorized, that itself is not good. And on the part of interviewers not asking questions relevant to the specific role, I actually have had some interviewers who have done that before. So I interviewed at one company once, I won't name the specific company, but they literally gave me a public GitHub repository, brought me to some issue, and they were like, hey, we know you probably don't have enough time to solve this in this interview, but all we want you to do is just go through this repository, familiarize yourself with it, and show us the steps you'd start taking to try to solve this issue. So they were upfront that the goal was not to perfectly solve it, and they gave me a real task and just wanted to evaluate how I sort of get myself familiar with a new repository and how I go about trying to solve some issue. And I think that was a very good interview. But on the other hand, I've had very traditional data structures and algorithms interviews too. And I don't think these are necessarily bad. Even though they might not be as relevant to the actual job, that's not necessarily what matters. What actually matters is simply that they have the ability to filter out false positives. So they filter out people who just are not qualified for the job. And as strange as it might sound, I actually think these data structures and algorithms interviews do a decent job of this. I don't think no matter how many questions you do that very many people are particularly good at leak code and can solve these problems very well and can actually do well in the interviews based on their actual criteria at the same time as being bad at coding and bad at software engineering. I'm sure that some of those people exist, but in general, I don't actually think a lot of them exist. And I think the false positive rate is very low. And if the false positive rate was higher, so if we were hiring more bad developers, then we would see companies going away from it. And that's not what we're seeing because ultimately that is probably the most important thing. Hiring one bad developer is absolutely detrimental. So companies try everything they can to avoid that. And if that was happening, they would be changing it up and they're not. Now, of course, that does mean that you have some false negatives. So there's people you don't hire that you probably should have hired, but that's not that big of a deal because just the hiring pool is big enough. And these people who are really bad at these algorithm style coding interviews either will take these steps to become better at them because it is a skill you can train, or they will go to one of these companies that isn't actually requiring this type of interview. Brain Dead to ask relevant interview questions for the specific role. I do love angry people on Reddit. This person responded, but they just want to see how you problem solve. Just kidding. We just learn <laughs> to pretend it's the first time we see a problem. And I think that's the whole issue with lead code. I don't know why companies are pushing this interview style because it is quite unnatural. I mean, I can't even think of a situation where someone has come to me and said, D, you solve this two line problem. No, you don't need to think about the input or the data or whatever the stakeholder wants to know. You do not need to think about that. You only have a few minutes. You just solve this problem of adding two numbers. I'll even draw you a picture. Like yeah, I mean, it is kind of funny when you think about it, but the goal of this is not to be a perfect representation of what you do on the job. It's simply to be a proxy for do you have these skills necessary to do that job? And ultimately, companies seem to have determined that it is a good enough proxy. It's working. And does that mean it's perfect and getting us to a global optimal of hiring the absolute best software engineers for the best positions? No, but it seems to be working. So that's what they're doing. What is that? I mean, have you ever seen that situation before? It's actually pretty sad. I think interview candidates, especially for software engineering, are treated pretty badly. And it's actually not funny. Companies should be called out on it. I do think it is Big Tech's fault because lead code itself isn't bad. I think there have always been a version of the lead code test in the past where you would practice a few examples just to understand what the company wants. And yeah, there definitely has been. And there's also somewhat similar things in a lot of other fields. It's not like it's just software engineering where we have this idea of a almost test in an interview. It's an okay way to learn to code, but the issue is that somewhere down the line, there's this culture put forth that you have to grind and solve 500 lead code problems. Then you'll have a chance to be employed. That is so bad. I do wish that tech companies were a bit more understanding and opening about the interview process. Yeah, absolutely agree. I think the biggest issue is the culture that's been created. And I think that's, again, been created by the community, but I also think it is, at this point, sort of the company's jobs to help end that culture and to tell people, hey, this is how we're actually grading you on coding interviews. And I think when more people see that, they will go away from this 
culture of I need to do 300 or 500 practice problems because that's just not actually the best way to prepare for the coding interviews and it's not going to give you the best chance of getting the job and it's just going to waste a lot of your time. Take a look at this post from Reddit. It was titled, Microsoft interviewer told me lead code is bad. I had my final interview for the Microsoft SWE internship role today and something really struck out to me. We were wrapping my last interview up after all the questions were done and he literally told me, you aren't like other candidates. I asked him what he meant, and he said every candidate he had interviewed so far just grinds lead code and he could tell. He said that apparently everyone comes into the interviews and just codes out the solution regardless of how difficult the problem is that he gives them. But as an interviewer, he doesn't actually know if they can code well or not. They could literally be copying and pasting the solution that they have memorized. Yeah, so that absolutely happens. And it's awesome to see interviewers who are good at this and are just like, hey, you are doing a great job even if you don't get the question completely correct. I've told this story before, but my first Facebook interview, I actually got the entire question incorrect. Nothing worked. That said, the interviewer told me after that they thought I did an amazing job. And that wasn't because I regurgitated some solution. It's because I was able to showcase my problem-solving skills. I was able to articulate well what different paths I was going on and what I was thinking about and how I was going about trying to solve this problem, even if at the end I didn't actually finish solving it. And I think they found it sort of refreshing that I was just sort of thinking through the problem in a real software engineering way rather than sort of just regurgitating something that I'd seen before. And yes, I do wish big tech companies were more open about what they wanted up front. Yeah, 100% agree. If more tech companies were open about that and if they did a better job sometimes of training the interviewers, because while that might be what the tech companies say they want, I think some interviewers are sort of just looking for how correct did you get the solution? And that's not really what they're supposed to be doing, at least at tech companies where I've seen the criteria, but it is probably something that is happening from time to time. Which would sort of stop this toxic culture that you need to spend three months prepping for lead code. If they were more forthcoming, we would know what exactly they're looking for. Do they want someone who can solve problems in seconds and just pump out solutions? Or do they want someone who can talk through the solution, talk through their thinking process, and yes, maybe somewhere down the line, their solution may not be 100% correct, but that is okay because they care about the thinking process of the software engineer. And then if they told candidates this in advance, put out a blanket statement, give candidates proper learning guides, which maybe just warrant a few hours of self-study, you won't have a situation like this where the rhetoric is, learn as much lead code as you can, the more the better. In fact, lead code until you, and it's just you. Yeah, absolutely agree with this part. I think companies need to be more forthcoming about what exactly they're looking for and what the best ways are to actually prepare for that. What does months and months of lead coding actually prepare you in terms of becoming an actual software engineer? At least if the candidate was building an app for three months, they would learn something that's beneficial. So that's true, but I think you also, if you spend three months doing something like lead code or whatever coding interview prep you're doing, that you will also learn something beneficial from that if, again, you're actually doing it correctly. That is my rant on why lead code is absolutely Now, if you ever come across a problem in your real job where you had to add numbers backwards and someone even gave you a picture to understand the concept, please let me know. Thank you so much for watching. If you like my content, please like, comment, and subscribe. Yeah, make sure to subscribe to D. And if you do want to see how I go about studying for coding interviews and how I really didn't do that many coding interview prep problems, but was still able to get very good at them, you should watch this video next.